welcome to the new series of Top Rods. Today I'm down in a cold morning in November down on the Kingsbridge Estuary. Today I'm getting together with the UK Shore record holder for the Gilthead Bream, Mr. Rob Wheaton. Going to go through the session itself and obviously cover the morning's fishing. It's down fishing a competition, down targeting flounder today, so we're going to go over to Rob now and go through this episode. <laughs> So we're down in the day, Mr. Rob Wheaton. Hello, Hello mate. mate. Nice to see you again. And you, mate. Thanks for doing it, mate. No problem. So before we go into the session itself, we're going to go obviously go through the history of goatheads because this is a species that you've obviously targeted for a long time. Yes, yeah, several years. A lot of dedication. Yeah, probably about 15, 15 years. 15 plus years. Yeah, all, all different marks over the yeah, southwest. Yeah, right, the whole southwest, Cornwall. Yeah. Mainly Devon, but Cornwall as well. M mostly estuaries or open coats. Um, we've mainly been estuaries, but this year just gone we yeah. started on the open coast especially yeah. at night as well we've yeah. had a couple at night as well yeah. so um yeah it's definitely so not a lot of guys really. fish for the gateways at night time most of it's done in the daytime most of it's done in the daytime but we've heard that then especially in Cornwall's, they're catching quite a few from the open coast beaches yeah. at night yeah and we've had a few now in in, in the river as well at night yeah. as well so, and then um, that's how, that's how things come about, really. So for most viewers watching this, a lot of people think that's just you've just gone out and just caught that. That no, took no, a lot of dedication and hours. A lot of time, a lot of hours, um, a lot of blanking sessions, to be yeah. honest with you. We've had probably 30, 35 plus trips this year. Yeah. Not, not mega sessions, no. you know, four or five hours. So yeah. Lots and lots of blanks. Lots and lots of blanks. Last year we had, I don't think we had a guilt head between us, me and Mike. No? No, nope, never had the one. But this year we've had a good yeah, year. It, it, so, it yeah. seems to be a better year for guilt heads. Definitely, yeah. Definitely. For, for size, I think it's been better, better. this year. Yeah. Not quite so many, but we've had better, better qualities. Now, fish, obviously yeah. for our club, four, four pound baits a specimen weight, you've had many fish over that, over that over size. Over the years, yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, a dozen plus, plus maybe. This year you've had, <laughs> yeah, about several, yeah, yeah. several. So before before the, the the main fishing question, your previous PB was um, six fifteen. And it's a hell of a fighting fish mm. for for that sort of size fish for the fight. Obviously, some of you are watching it this now. What's what that was that fight like? Uh, what the six fifteen? Um, it was unexpected really because I had it? several fish up to about three or four pounds. Yeah. Um, st still very good fighting fish, yeah. um, but this one here just totally, totally out of the blue, topped me off, and um, I suppose about a 10, 10 minute fight with it. Was it? Yeah, topped me down the river on the back tide. Um, yeah, good fight, good fight. They just don't give up, do they? They don't give up, no. not to the last minute, and in fact they wear ourselves out quite quickly. Yeah, I, I've only fished once in Hell Pool what, years ago for them, and I, I fished down there, I had one just under £3, and mm. to be honest, I wasn't expecting it at all for hot, such a hot, like small fish, they, yeah. they just go, they go, go. go. They just don't no. give up, and in the end, when you actually bring them in, they're exhausted, and you need to spend a, quite a lot of time so with them. To put them back. And they do sometimes go back, but not always. No. Yeah, no. It's right. quite important for you to put them back as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. We in. put back probably ninety percent of our fish if you can. Um, if they're sometimes they could be badly hooked. Yeah. And we we have to keep one or two, but um, hopefully try to put them put them all back. Well. So for bait wise, what would you normally use for targeting gilt heads? I prefer bait is peeler crab. Peeler crab. But yeah. Lugworm. Uh, to be honest, before I had the big one in question, the, the six fifteen, I had a lugworm. Yeah. But um, I think for the bigger fish now, definitely. Peeler crab. Peter crab, unpeeled as well. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of people use. You can use lug. You can use rag. Lug, rag. Uh, um, on the open coast, razor fish is very good. Is it as well? Fresh or frozen doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's produced. We've had fish on razor. Uh, we've had goat heads on razor fish yeah. as well. So. Yeah, yeah. They're not overly fussy. I don't think. So for the open coast sort of size fi fishing, is it different seasons rather than where you would normally fish, like the summer months of the estuary? Because you've had you've had some decent fish in in, in months where people would think. We've had them oh, yeah. in the flounder season, yeah, in yeah. February and, and January as well. So, uh, but for the open coast, it's definitely summer. Summer times when the water's warmed up. Warm yeah, warm. and I think they're di they're a different sort of fish. They don't if those fish don't come into the estuaries. No, because sometimes they're not even nowhere near the estuaries Greece. as well. So they're out there for a reason. They're out yeah, there feeding, feeding, and they're feeding on shellfish mainly. So, brilliant. So your crab doesn't really come into it on the open coast for me anyway. It's been yeah. shellfish. So. So 
here, with, here we have Mike Hodge, Bob's Hello, part, partner in crime for the session, for the yes. main session yes. event. Yes. You two guys have fished together for many years. That's, that's correct. How many yeah. years have you fished together right now? 14, 15. 15 years? Yeah. Is that since you both joined the club together? Or? No, it, I fished with them when I was in a different club. Did you? I still fished with them. Like, okay, you know, yeah. We used to go out in the and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 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 For, so how long have you actually fished for Guilt as you quite a while as well? Since the 90s. Since the 90s. Yeah. Many, not just local estuaries, you've got to obviously no, travel I've around a little bit. Yeah. Have you found the increase in numbers or since the 90s? Or better fish come into it? Yes. A lot better fish, obviously. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I know years ago you could go and you could get like six or nine fish at a time, but yeah. they weren't the quality that there is now, you not see. Not the big, no, there was a lot of numbers, but not yeah, the size. You don't get... Yeah, now you've got better size What was? Fish. Do you know what the record was back then in the 90s? And I think, I think it was one that um, a teacher from Kingsbridge had. Did it? From the shore, before um, Gus Carr's boy had his. Okay. Um, but it was, it was quite a lot of fish around, you know, years ago. Yeah. It was what, about seven pound would be like a, a huge fish back then. Oh yeah, it was yeah. Fish. Now they're getting into double figures and That's they're right, still yeah, bigger out yeah, there. Yeah. So we're going to go into the main event itself, mate. Just a normal session for you and Rob, I suppose. Just getting yeah, together to go yeah, out and have, yeah. yeah. No, no different than no. normal. So from your Just, eyes, your perspective, what happened for the session? Well, I was I was more excited than than <laughs> him. Yeah, it was it was tremendous. It's a breathtaking moment when when you when you're around the fish like that, <coughs> no matter what species it is, because I think it. it we're all anglers, aren't we? And it's just That's nice. Right. I get the same buzz off seeing someone else catch yeah, some, I do. a fish like yeah, that. I it's do. just it goes to show what's there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a big achievement as well but at the same time. The other thing was is you know I, all the time. First of all, I thought, Christ, don't lose it, like you yeah. know, because it was to go in. the time it took. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, and I was you know I was really excited. Well, how long would you say the time was from obviously hooking it into to landing it? About twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. That's a long, like, a long fight. It's a long fish. time. It yeah. seems longer. When yeah. you're there, because yeah. you're waiting to see it, you know. Yeah. But you've got to play a fish like that as well. That's you? right. You yeah. can't just bully a fish yeah. like that into the shoreline. You've got to, you've got to play it. So as obviously pitch black, you've got your headlights beaming yeah. over the sea. Suddenly you see this monster turn yeah, it up. Was it was a your, monster. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Would it yeah. come right out splashing? Or no, it, it come in. It actually, I had the net in. I stood in the water and I had the net down, waiting for it to come. Like. Yeah. And I thought, I ain't going to walk out too far because yeah. I'm bloody fall over, like, you know. Yeah. But as it came in, so it, like, went straight towards the net. Yeah. And yeah. I got him, brought yeah. him in, that was it. But I was dumbfounded. Unreal. Really, it was, yeah. yeah. What was your first reaction when you seen it come up? Well, obviously, when you realised that what it was? Cool. I was, well, I was shocked first. <laughs> because of that thought, size. What oh my a God. fish, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, no, it was... Incredible! Yeah. I have netted a ten-pound pollock from the shore. From have you? Like, you know. Yeah. But it's ma amazing fish. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven yeah. angular. But that was a cracking fish. Yeah. Honestly. Big achievement. And uh, yeah. he said, "What do you reckon it is then? Do you reckon it's ten? I said, "I think it's bigger than that." I said, "I reckon it'll go twelve. And On the scale, was it went <laughs> twelve three? <laughs> cracking. Cold. Unreal. Do you think you ever see a fish like that again? I doubt it. No. I doubt it. You can never say never with the sport, no, though, can no, you? Because, I know, but I'm yeah. getting on in yours now, you see, so, you know. <laughs> it could be your turn next boast, time. You're going to make a boast yeah. of I think fish, of what you've got. the right marks and knowledge has got a lot to do with this type of fishing, especially yeah. what, like with the gilders and stuff. You'll go, like Rob was saying, you go to different marks and you get a lot of numbers, then you go to one mark and you'll just specifically fish out for that one big fish. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you guys do. After. That's right. You're after that one big yeah. one. It don't yeah. matter how many fish come along. That's you're right. after that, that, that main yeah, one. Yeah, well, that's the idea of it, really. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you fish a little bit different than, than Rob. You, you fish I, yours. I, I do running pat and pat. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I do do running ledger as well. Yeah. But I Is there any reason why you fish that way? You've a better... I like running pat from the point of view that if a fish takes, it ain't got no resistance. Like, you know? Just take up and gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes I'll put a stop behind it so that like a boat rig would be boat yeah so yeah. that he hits it and that's it and yeah it that's what i normally use the boat rig so yeah. look, you can pick up take off and you've take got it. that initial that's take to that's it. set the hook hopefully yeah but yeah but i do do that i just vary it different times yeah and if i'm losing a bit of gear then i go straight down to the simplest one where yeah. it's you know i think keeping the basics it's, it's a lot to do with fishing half the time as well isn't it? Yeah. it keeps it more natural and i thought that was a good tip what rob said about obviously not just keeping the crab not not taking the no. shell off and just keeping it nice and natural legs on it's what they're 
hitting into really. That's right, yeah. I know yeah. a lot of guys when you're floundering a lot and you're obviously taking, you're de them and stuff like that. I never do that because no. I think they're not doing that out in the, in the scene. No, they're not. They're, they're not picking they're, them up as they are. It's extra exactly. selling, that's what they're used to, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, um, it's, it's cracking. Yeah, An experience, you know, I'll, I'll never forget it. No. Never. No. It's embedded. I, actually, I, I think about it now when I'm in bed even. <laughs> you know, I know it's what a bit sad. What does the mission say about that? <laughs> a bit sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it is. It's just a, it's what, it's a fish of a lifetime, and it's what we yeah. all dream of. And um, it goes to show when you put in that time of dedication into a certain species, you have got a, a big chance of hitting into it. That's um, right. And uh, it's what British records or everybody's dream, or every angler's dream of. And that's right. Yeah, you put yeah. the time in, you put the effort, and you will get the rewards one day, hopefully. No, it is a yeah. cracking fish, and you know, I was delighted, as I say, over the moon. Yeah, it was unbelievable. So we're down here, fl you're floundering today. Actually, yes, we you? are. Yeah, we're in the Federation Comp. Yeah. The Federation Comp. So, back to the main event. Right. The fishing question. Yeah. Um, stop, stop me off for the month in question. And before that, you were. It was uh, early October. Yep. Yeah. Prior to that, we've been had a couple of trips. Yeah. Not much. To be quite honest, it was very slow. Very, was it? Yeah, it was like things weren't happening. And we had a couple of trips, had a couple of small ones, and we had another. Decided to give it another go in the particular mark. And um, at night, yeah. So we, get, we arrived there probably around about five, six o'clock in the evening, just coming in dark. Had a couple of small ones. Yeah. We had, we had one each, about a pound and a half. Um, nothing special. And on the back tide went a bit quiet. Yeah. So we said we'd give it to about nine, ten o'clock. By about quarter past nine, had a bite. Yeah. This is about half tied back, I'd imagine right now. Yeah. And um, picked the rod up. It's one of us slowly, a bit like a ray bite. I said to Mike, I said, just don't feel like a bream at the moment. And then pick the, as I say, picked the rod up and it just went over and stayed there. And I thought, oh, I'll just give it a little. So I pulled into it. It was not a ray. No. And <laughs> all hell broke loose, but it just screamed off. And I think for about a quarter of an hour, never, never seen the fish at all. It just stared out in the middle of the river, shaking his head. You, knew, you knew it was a gill, or big bass. I had, a good, I had a good feeling it was a gill, yeah, because it stayed deep. Whereas yeah. the bass would come up on the surface yeah. and sp sp splash around. And eventually, uh, probably in about a quarter of an hour, got it in once. Yeah. Mike seen the fish. I seen the fish, and I said, I, I said, this is a good, good fish. So by this time, you both, your headlights are on, yeah, you're looking out on the yeah. water, and fish come up splashing. Come up, you come up, seen the light. Aim for the bottom. Gone again. And I, I suppose this went on for about another 10 minutes. We got into the net twice, same thing happened. Yeah. Come out, screamed off again, and just stared it in the middle of the channel, shaking his head, and I was getting a bit, a bit concerned Sorry. now, because we only had size, size one hooks, yeah. but they're quite strong hooks. And um, eventually, I managed to coax it back in again, and they might put the net down and I said just hold it there and the fish swam straight into it. Unreal. Yeah, unreal. And lifted the fish out and of course I thought no, I was over the moon. I thought this is a, a double figure fish. Yeah. I'm gonna be well happy. And um so I picked the fish out, left it in the net. I said to Mike, I said, what, what size do you reckon it is? I said, if it's ten pounds I'll be you know happy like fish of a lifetime for me. He said, I've got to reckon got a feeling I reckon it's at least twelve pounds. Yeah. So we weighed it on the scales, twelve pound three, and he was all but spot on. You yeah. knew exactly what the re record was, the British record at the time. I knew what the record was. Yeah, it was ten pound seven. Apparently, prior to to me catching this one, someone had one down in Cornwall somewhere, at ten pound eleven, but it hadn't been wrapped right, right, so, right, no. Um, yeah, kept it in the net. And to be honest, I wanted to return the fish. You put a lot of effort in trying to get it. Yeah, I mean, we spent. Well, it might probably be longer than me, but at least 15 plus years trying to get a real, real big, big fish. fish. And this fish was a special fish to me. Yeah, and really. Yeah, and it, it was paid off for all the hard work we've been putting over the years, to be honest. And you've put a lot of hard work in. A lot of hours, a lot yeah. of hours. Yeah, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, as well as you know, coming travelling around, traveling. fuel and that. Yeah, definitely. And I, and we've always felt, I don't know, it's a, it's a fish that I look at and I think I, yeah, I don't want to harm it. You want life. it to? That's what you, you you're fishing for, and you. Big yeah, game. and so I kept it in the net in the water for about a quarter of an hour, trying to revive it. It, it, it was alive, but it was just big. Turning each time. It just time. kept going belly up, and 
So I said to Mike, I'm going to put it back. Yeah. We weigh it on certified scales. And, um, so is it that, well, that done enough? So anybody that's enough. watching, if you've got certified scales and you catch fish like that, you can return them. Yeah, definitely. Which obviously you've tried tried to do. We tried it, tried it for about a quarter of an hour. I was actually in the water with it as well. Like, and it just, just wasn't having it. It wasn't having it. No. Well. So we, we had to keep the fish. And, um, and yeah, and that was it really. It yeah. Was, Fish of a lifetime. Yeah, definitely. Did yeah. it kick in straight away? Or? Nope, didn't. No? Nope, didn't. No. It was about Tommy. In fact, when I had it in the net, first off, never weighed it for about 10 minutes, just looking at it. and Amazement. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking, oh, God. <laughs> what's what? you know, so we took it out, weighed it, and um, then we packed up, left. Yeah. And straight away after, you never even had another cast? No. Nope. <laughs> Mike said, can we go home now? Like, you know, it's about quarter to yeah. 10, 10 o'clock yeah. now, so it was getting a bit late. It was in the dark as well, obviously. So. Um, I'd have celebrated the pint, pint on the way home. Got to be done. Yeah. Got to be done. Yeah. So yeah, memorable fish. And Unreal. Never, uh, never, ever see that again. Dedicate. You never know, though, do you? No, you never know. Dedication never and all work. Never paid say off. never. Never, never. No. But, I mean, um, who would have thought the record would have went in yeah, twice in one year? One year. So, and I think there are definitely bigger fish out there. Hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the commercial boys they've had them to 14, 15 pounds in, in, in the, the same in the same right? yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 So they are definitely around. Yeah. Just, just taking into that sort of that fish and time and dedication, obviously it pays off. Yeah, definitely. So, that would be one of your biggest tips when any angler's looking to target bream and different things like that. Just keep at it. Keep at it. Keep right. at it. Um, try different areas, different tides. I mean, some. I think high water is probably the slackest period for the for the bream. They, they like a they like a flow. They like a they bit like of push. push yeah. Back flood tide or back tide, but not too big a tide either. Yeah, definitely like not too tides. big a tide. Yeah. But medium tides, I find. Do you find fish in the gullies and, and that help, or the banks, would you say? I, I would say in, in the gullies. In the gullies? Yeah. Because they're running through the gullies, they're, picking they're, up the crab the, and the bits and pieces. They're in slightly deeper water. Um, apart from that, clarity, water clarity, is the most important Quarter. thing. Even at, even at night, we catch them at night. Yeah. If it's dirty water. No chance. No, I'm not interested. No. Which is, I can't work out why they feed at night. It's strange, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what it is, but they definitely have got to have that clear water clear water yeah so for equipment wise what would you normally use for for targeting the gilts obviously when you're going after the gilts you have to the specimen sizes yeah. uh, so you want something quick quite rod wise definitely something a bit powerful yeah spot rod maybe yeah. that sort of yeah so, sort of size rod or a very light beach cast what do you what do you normally use i use a very light beach cast yeah. two to four ounces it's, yeah yeah i used to use multipliers i've gone back to fixed fix now. better You've got a better um, drag system on a fixed yeah, pool, I think. So you can adjust, fish. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Braid or no, mono? Mono. Uh, 15, we use 15 pound mono, um, fluorocarbon. Yeah. 20, 25 pound trace, trace line. minimum. Yeah, minimum. because they've got very large Just teeth. Teeth, yeah. Um, and always a small hook, obviously. You said always small hooks. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, the, the, when you say small, what was the, what was the size s- one? Size one hook. You wouldn't yeah. go no bigger. No, nope. no, nope. no. The Chinu range I use. Yeah, just um, make sure that make sure the crabs. Obviously, the the hook points the out very proud. Point, point, yeah. Yeah. Um, big baits, small baits. Not too big a baits. No, no. Half, half a crab. Half a crab. If it's bass, if a lot getting a lot of bass problem, I can tend to just take the back shell off. Yeah. Leave the legs and everything else. The, car- the underneath carcass, all sh- leave all the shell on. On of it. Yeah, legs as well. Don't peel the legs. Don't peel none of it off. Just no. leave it as half a crab. Just yeah. keep all the hardness on and the shell yeah. and everything. And just de- definitely keeps it bass. For a natural look, look, I suppose. More natural, yeah, I think. Um, we've This year, we I don't peel any of the crabs. I just cut them in half. half. Straight on. Bound them straight on. Break the shell on the back and just leave all that on. And Fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. It, it keeps the, the school bass away. That's the main important thing. So with obviously learning different skills and up from from starting off doing gill with bream fishing, it's stuff you've obviously generated knowledge over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you can't get all the crab, definitely lugworm. Is lugworm it? is the next next best prey. Yeah. definitely without a doubt. Lugworm, ragworm will work. Shellfish, um, mussel. We've had a mussel. Running ledgers, rigs, wise. My own personal preference is running ledger. Yeah, yeah. I yeah don't know why, keep it, keep it simple. My mate might use this run uh, paternoster. Yeah, just, just, just as it's well. Just personal preference. Yeah. yeah, definitely not too long a trace, trace as well. Keep it tight to the bottom so they're hitting it and not moving off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And definitely watch your rod. Brilliant, mate. No well, thank you very much for the day, mate. That was the coverage for the uh, bream, which weighed in at twelve pounds three ounces. So that's the that's the one to beat, guys. 
But we're down here on the King's Protestory today, and you're actually fishing a competition today. Yeah, yeah. Target Fla and flounder. Flounder only. Yeah, We've had a today. few already. We've had a couple, yeah. So we're going to let you get back now, do a little bit of filming while you're doing. But thanks right. very much. Cheers, Andy. Cheers, buddy. All the best, mate. Cheers.